Welcome everyone to the 2023 Global Animal Disaster Management Conference brought to you in partnership with Animal Evac New Zealand and our platinum sponsor Four Paws International. Our next speaker is going to be on livestock farmers, the state of disaster preparedness in Bulgaria, and that's Dr. Gergana Valieva. It is a privilege to have you here today, Gergana. All bios and abstracts for our speakers are available to read from our website under speakers. Before we start, some basic housekeeping. The Zoom chat feature has been disabled. So if you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature. We will endeavor to answer those at the end. This year, we have enabled multilingual closed captioning. So if you'd like to hear the presentation in another language, click on the closed caption icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We encourage you to use hashtag G-A-D-M-C-O-N-F for Twitter and other social media. A short evaluation will be made available when you exit the session. And just a reminder, all these are recorded, but they will not be available until they've been edited, and those will be released later this year. So without further delay, Gergana, it is my pleasure to welcome you to GADMC. Thank you, Rebecca. Hello, everyone. Uh, as you can see, the title is present here on the presentation, and I will go straight to the next slide. Uh, I'm coming from a small agricultural group country situated in uh, Europe. So first of all, I will present you briefly with the geographical location and the most common natural hazards for, uh, for my country in order to understand uh, what the, the farmers uh, have to deal with and my interest on this topic. So uh, this is uh, a map here that uh, you could see. This is the European Mediterranean seismic hazard map and uh, Bulgaria is situated here in this uh, region. Uh, you could see the difference in colors and the more intensive the color is, the higher the risk of earthquake. So in short, Bulgaria is prone to, hazard, uh, to earthquakes. There is uh, another map. So just to outline Bulgaria here. So this is uh, my small country, and this is the Black Sea here. So you could uh, see these um, blue dots with different size. And uh, you could see here uh, to the right side of, uh, of this uh, picture, there is information regarding the magnitude. And it is visible that each day or a couple of days, we have uh, small earthquakes, and although uh, we uh, do not feel them, uh, we are prone, prone to this type of uh, natural disaster. Another uh, common disaster for my country appear to be forest fires, wildfires. You could see the whole country is uh, with uh, high risk of uh, such fires, greater than 50% chance for them, and uh, it is estimated due to some statistics at national level that more than 570 fires on average are registered per year, especially during the, the summer season due to the high temperature, but also due to some illegal uh, agricultural practices. And uh, the next one from the most common natural hazards you could see the example here on the slides. We're talking about flash floods. Very uh, often they happen in my country and destroy property, livelihoods of people, but also endanger uh, the life of animals. And uh, there is a simple table here to the right side of the slide based on uh, national statistics from National Statistical Institute. And if you go uh, briefly through, through the um, example, you could see that fires, also uh, floods are one of the most common natural hazards. So that was all for uh, the situation uh, in uh, Bulgaria and its geographical location and uh, proneness to natural hazards. 
based uh, on the adequate common framework that we have on uh, international, European, and national level, uh, we have set uh, rules for disaster management, control, communication, and prevention of uh, disasters as well. So uh, we have uh, authorities that are responsible for disaster management at national, regional, and local level. So when a disaster event is registered, we have um, uh, operational centers set at the regional level. It is within the Department of uh, Fire Safety and Civil Protection. We have also national emergency number and uh, this operational center maintains regular connections with the other headquarters at different levels. Just to point out some of the structures that are included in uh, this uh, system, you could see uh, we're talking about uh, both public and animal health authorities. And all these services mentioned here on the slide on this figure are functional units of the unified rescue system uh, operating as per the European legislation in this field. So this is very brief uh, about the legal framework, but what about the other key stakeholders and their awareness uh, about uh, the disasters? So animal owners and uh, all other professionals that have to deal with animals, including uh, veterinarians, have to raise their awareness and to build their uh, resilience in order to be better prepared and manage and cope if such events, disastrous events strike the country. So uh, th th there was my interest. Uh, um, a couple of years ago, I made another research regarding uh, pet animal owners with uh, the similar topic. And uh, the current one is about uh, livestock uh, animal owners. So uh, throughout the next slides, I will be able to, to compare their preparedness. Why is this important? We have a lot of research in the field and as the other speakers uh, also mentioned, disaster resilience is extremely important. It is highly dependent on the awareness, preparedness, communication and education of people from all societal groups. And uh, low levels of disaster preparedness could lead to uh, failure in household evacuation threatening the health and lives of all family members, including animals, emergency responders, and general public uh, as well. So uh, my idea was to understand the, the, the current level of awareness of animal owners in order to uh, be able, through my uh, institution, to provide more knowledge, uh, education and networking for them. And uh, in fact, my survey uh, started with an anonymous questionnaire in uh, April this year, uh, before delivering a short term educational course for farmers, which uh, is a part from a national uh, project for educating farmers in different spheres, and one of them is uh, disaster preparedness and management. So delivering the questionnaire to the farmers before, uh, before they are uh, of course, uh, what uh, uh, the results showed is that most of the responders uh, were male falling within the age group between 30 and 60 years of age. And just to mention that this profile fully corresponds with the state of uh, labor force in the field of agriculture in our country. Uh, you can see to the right the number of uh, men and women engaged in this field and uh, also this fact that uh, the labor force in, in the agricultural sphere in my country is getting older and older. So also half of the respondents uh, were with um, urban, uh, with, sorry, with rural uh, background. And I have not included that in the table here, but uh, uh, half of them uh, have their university degree, at least bachelor degree. 
And what did the, the results show? This is a simple um, information on the main animal species that were bred by the, the farmers in uh, my survey. And uh, some of them uh, bred and kept on the farm more than one species. Just to mention that uh, this is a typical situation in Bulgaria. As I mentioned, we are a small agricultural country and uh, mainly in the rural areas, uh, people are uh, uh, breeding animals for their own consumption. Uh, that's why you can see on the next uh, figure that uh, there are also farms with uh, less than 10 animals. Usually they keep them uh, for the, themselves sustaining their livelihoods, but uh, most of the respondents have uh, their farms with uh, animals between 100 and 500 pets. So we are coming to the uh, important part regarding their knowledge and uh, preparedness uh, regarding disasters. And uh, as I promised, I have included also uh, results from my previous study from two, two years ago regarding uh, the same uh, questions with pet owners. So you can see the first column in green is uh, for the, the farmers and the second column is for the pet owners on the same question. And uh, you could see pretty well that most of the respondents, more than 90% stated that they uh, are familiar with the most common hazards and potential disasters in their areas like floods, fires, storms, and, uh, and uh, the similar. Also, 100% of the farmers uh, declare that they know how and where to approach the public health services like uh, hospitals, fire departments, police uh, stations, emergency departments, Red Cross, etc. Also, high share, more than 80% stated that uh, they also uh, know which and uh, where uh, the animal health services are situated and how to contact them. Uh, talking about uh, private practitioners, veterinary practitioners, uh, uh, official veterinary authorities, animal shelters, animal hotels, etc. So uh, I also found that uh, there is a significant difference with regards to the age of the participants and their gender corresponding to their knowledge on the uh, relevant institutions, public and animal health uh, services in the region, supposing that uh, elder respondents and women as well were better prepared to contact the authorities. So to the next part regarding their preparedness, and availability of uh, disaster action plans developed both for their families and for their livestock. Again, a small comparison between uh, the livestock farmers and the pet owners to, to the right of the slide. And so we could see pretty well that more than 60% of the uh, livestock uh, owners have uh, prepared disaster plans, both for their family members and for their livestock, which I said uh, corresponds again with uh, the number of uh, the size of uh, their farms and uh, their uh, education and uh, background. Just to, just to say that, uh, uh, in order to put their farm into operation, they have to stick to certain legal uh, requirements and rules uh, regarding the buildings, premises, and many more. So uh, this is one of the reasons why they appear to be uh, well prepared and at least have developed such plans. I'm not going to talk uh, too much regarding this figure, regarding the additional identification, transportation devices, and additional supplies like water, food, and medicines. Because as I said, uh, most of our respondents have larger farms, so they are well equipped with um, transportation tracks, with loading platforms, especially the, the cattle farmers, 
and uh, some of them also produce their own uh, feed for, for the animals on site. So they have some resources and supplies. And regarding the additional identification, what I mean here is that as per the European legislation, all farm animals have mandatory identification with uh, individual uh, ear tags and they are electronical, so they are waterproof. Also, this is a unique or not so unique because I know that there are also other countries, but it is implemented in Bulgaria, a centralized database where all animal identifications are entered. They are connected to the farm, to the farmer as well. Uh, each movement of the animal is recorded, no matter if it goes to the slaughterhouse or to a fair or to, uh, or it's sold to another farm. So, um, the animals are identify, identified and uh, it is uh, easier to be traced in case of displacement. And uh, the last part that was uh, subject to the survey. And again, you can see the comparison, very drastic difference between livestock uh, owners and pet owners from uh, a previous study. Uh, talking about the evacuation. So uh, what is uh, visible here is that most, more than 80% of the farmers uh, will uh, stated that uh, if a safety evacuation is ordered, they would leave the area without their animals if the rescue team could not evacuate the animals at the same time as people. And only 16% of them stated that they would take their animals with them during evacuation. And this decision was significant for the groups of women and also uh, residents with rural background and as well university graduates. And when we pay attention to the pet owners, the picture here is on the opposite. Um, more of them are willing to take their, their pets during evacuation. Uh, it was stated also from the previous speakers that there is uh, it's a human animal bond and most of the pets are considered as family members as well. So this is the situation here. And in conclusion, I'm not going to repeat the findings regarding the, the profile of the um, participants. You already saw the figures. But uh, I have to say that based on these findings, uh, it appears clearly that uh, we do have the necessity of further development of emergency management at uh, national and regional level, also to provide some general um, recommendations to the, to the public for preparations of disaster family plan with inclusions of some provisions for the animals. And what is more important to encourage them to, to practice these plans, to uh, make simulations. Uh, I have to say that uh, I also participate as an expert at municipal level uh, for disaster preparedness and reducing the risk of uh, disasters, uh, talking about uh, animals. But uh, we still Switch have to make Oh, to make some uh, progress in uh, in this uh, area. And uh, I'm so glad for this opportunity uh, because I also get some insights and ideas from the previous speakers. So thank you for your attention and having me here at GADMAC 2023. Georgiana, what a fantastic presentation. I, I can't imagine getting that many people to respond to anything in the USA. I'm very impressed with the numbers of people that were able to be surveyed. And uh, this is the kind of numbers and information that we need for every country um, to be able to put those that that's just fantastic. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Um, Paolo's got a question. First of all, he said, congratulations to be noted the existence of an ex action plan on veterinary measures to be taken during disasters developed by the Bulgarian Food Safety Agency. So, don't see this as a question. 
but I could confirm that yes, there is uh, such a plan from our competent authority and the official veterinarians are doing great work uh, during floods, during fires, uh, treating animals and also uh, post-disaster management, food and feed safety as well. But uh, my focus is uh, not on the authorities, which already have uh, uh, developed this uh, action plan, but on the other participants, as I said, uh, animal owners and veterinary practitioners as well. So thank you, Paolo, for, for your uh, comment. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, the, I guess the only other thing that we would, going with the theme of the conference, is is there anything from the public policy or legislation perspective that you would consider um, crucial to be able to make things easier in your country to help animals in disasters? Yes, there is. Of course, uh, we have to as I said, we have plans, but uh, some of them, unfortunately, stay on paper. So we have to pay uh, more attention on uh, including uh, all the stakeholders, on having them providing their own insights, uh, a regular update of these plans, and also uh, making, the, making them work. So practicing, making simulations, uh, at the beginning of this session, I was very impressed with uh, the game that uh, Anne and uh, uh, her team pr um, presented, and uh, she said it is available, so I will try to contact them and to see the opportunities to, to use this game to introduce this to, to the authorities here, so we still have work to do. Yes. However, I have yet another congratulations from Mickey um, saying congratulations on this study. Data is now considered the world's most valuable resource, which is going to be important when we start talking about artificial intelligence. And uh, she says, not so sure how many people would participate in a study like this in Canada. So it's, it's fantastic that you were able to get that many people to participate. Is there any other questions from our panelists? If not, I'm going to say thank you for a fantastic presentation. If uh, anyone has questions, they can follow up with you on the first slide. Your email was there.